So to make your gravity defying wig, you're going to need high density foam as your base. You can find this stuff at Joann's Fabrics. There should be a little section by the cutting counter where you can get pre-cut scraps that are cheaper than like big, huge like chunks of this stuff. Uh, just make sure that the piece you get is going to be thick enough for you to cut your pigtail out because remember you are sculpting a 3D shape. You're also going to need a pattern in order to cut out your high density foam. You've got two options when it comes to this. I drew my own for Willow, which I will provide in the description, or you can draw your own. If you use mine though, just be wary, it might not come out to scale. Once you've cut your pattern though, it'll be relatively easy to get the rest of the stuff you need to cut out your foam. All you're going to need is a marker to trace out your pattern, an X-Acto knife to cut out the thicker initial part, and scissors to fine-tune and sculpt your pigtail. Keep in mind, you're going to want a trash can right next to you when you're doing this part because there are going to be so many foam scraps all over the place. I had it all over my floor. So just be wary of that. After we're done with that and we've cut out our armature, we're going to end up covering the ugly lime green color of the foam with some felt. So when you buy your felt, make sure you get it in the color of the wig you're making. So for Willow, that would be black. For the purposes of this tutorial though, you're gonna see that I'm gonna be using a really, really bright red fabric. And that is going to make it a lot easier for you guys to see what I'm doing in later steps where I'm going to be applying black wig hair to the armature. And that way you'll be able to differentiate what's wig hair and what's felt. Speaking of wig hair, uh, you're going to want to buy wig wefts for this project. And you can get that from any number of like sites where you can buy usually regular cosplay wigs. Amazon, AliExpress, even Arda if you really want to. What is going to make a big difference though is how long your wefts are because you do not want to run out of wefts because you didn't get something that's long enough. Your weft should be able to fit around the entire outer edge of your armature, like the longest part possible. So if you can, try to measure that and then like write down that number and keep it in mind when you're looking at the length of the wig wefts that you're trying to buy. After this though, the materials you need are pretty straightforward. You're gonna need tacky glue to apply the wig wefts, you're gonna need a stiff haired brush, and you're gonna want two bowls. You're gonna want one for your tacky glue and one for some water, as well as paper towels to dry your brush off on. In order to attach your finished armature to your wig, you're going to want a needle and thread as well as fishing wire for extra support. And I'll explain how that's gonna work a little later. But that should be everything we need to get started. Okay, so first thing is actually cutting out the armature. So we've got our pattern and we've got our foam block. And first thing we need to do is immediately start tracing out this pattern onto the foam block so we know what we're cutting out. So, simplest part is just tracing around this pattern. Make sure you're holding this down well so that you're not accidentally tracing in a, like underneath it or anything like that. So now you've got your outline, but it doesn't just stop at one side because this is a three dimensional figure. You're gonna to wanna to mark on all sides where this is gonna be cut out. What I like to do is I like to take this end, you see the pattern on top. I like to mark it exactly where the edges are so that we can, when we transfer the pattern onto the bottom, we make sure it's even with with the top we'll be able to cut straight down so this is what it'll look like um so that you make sure you're cutting straight down and we'll do the same for the other side here now for this specific block of foam that i have this side is um kind of a bit of an angle 
So, um, what we're going to do is when we trace the pattern on the bottom, we're going to use the side that is straight, meaning this end as our reference. We've got some guides as to where to line up our pattern from the other side. Actually, real quick, I'm going to also add a mark on the edge to make sure that the we know where the bevel is and where it should end. So that that's how much extra our bevel gives on this side. So we're lining up this pattern using our markings right up and down here. So now we just trace it out again. got the pigtail traced out on both sides and now is kind of the tough part because you really do have to think three-dimensionally when you're doing this but for my pigtail I want it to be thicker on this end where there's the big like stub and then I want it to thin out as it goes all along the edges so I'm going to be marking that on the sides I'm gonna start, I'm gonna use my pattern as a reference when it comes to thickness, because I want it to be the same thickness all the way around, if that makes any sense. Like, I want it to be j that thick all the way around. So, I used this as a guide to mark the thickness on the end. I'll do the same on the other side. Let me mark a guide real quick. So, now I know on this end in particular, it's going to be about yay thick. On this end right here, you have the thicker part going into a thinner. And so we want the same thing to happen on the side here. So what I'm gonna do, let's see, we're gonna mark, we're gonna start with marking like this. Marking this doesn't make anything permanent, you know? You still haven't cut it out yet, so the damage isn't done. Um, if you're cutting it out and you figure you want to go thinner or something like that, feel free to try that out. Just be careful about taking away too much material though, because then you can't add that material back. It's very rough, but this is like my guesstimate as to how the thickness is going to be when I cut this out here. If things are a little bit different here, there's just like a little tiny, like, stub that we're gonna need to worry about. We are gonna need to worry about this part, though, because it's gonna be very thin. I think that works. So we've got our thickness going around. You see it kind of thins out as you go, and then we'll figure out the, the end bits later. But we've got everything pretty much patterned out. It's very important to uh, pattern it out on all sides, and um, because it's a three-dimensional shape, you want to make sure your thickness is right and before you cut it out and you accidentally make a mistake. So, now we get to actually cutting it out. This process is a little bit... Um, experimental. My point of reference for um, the, ch the methods of cutting this out would be Jessica Negri. I would check out, uh, she made some sort of bow. Um, I'll link it. It's She made it out of pink insulation foam, but the way that she carved it out, like patterning it like this, and then cutting it out um, two-dimensionally, and then whittling it away until it like it turned into a three-dimensional shape. That seems to be the me best method for doing this. It's just that this material is a little tougher. I would recommend um, anybody that wants to experiment with this trying pink insulation foam and seeing how it works. Um, I didn't want to use it because it's just very like temperamental when it comes to what kind of glue or materials you can use on it. It melts and dissolves very, very easily. So um, if you cut out something from pink insulation foam, you would either have to cover it in warbler or you would have to coat it in wood glue 
before you did anything else to it to avoid it dissolving under random circumstances. And I also get afraid that it's like brittle, like it, it'll snap easily, but I don't know. I don't think like if you're wearing a wig like that, I don't feel like it would be subject to so much pressure that it would like literally break off of your wig, like the tip of your pigtail would break off. But you know, try it, you know? So we're gonna take this knife, this uh, X-Acto blade, along the cutting patterns, and the... I don't know, I can't take it out anymore. I might need to change blades soon, but for now, I I'd recommend getting a new blade and not doing what I'm doing. Um, we are going to... take that, and as you can see, you can open it up just a little bit. So this is what makes it kind of a process, because you can't cut all the way down on the first try. You kind of need to do this, open it up, and then cut again. Um, Try to make sure that you're keeping the blade vertical. I know it's very hard, um, but... This is actually not a bad cut. Um, okay, so let me just... Okay, so there we go. We've got one side cut. This is actually a pretty clean cut, you can tell. It's not terrible. I've done worse. Um, that's the best method for cutting this out, like, straight down, though. Um, otherwise, if you're, if you're, like, hacking away at it like you would a piece of steak or something like that, it'll come out really, like, I don't know if you saw what this end looks like, but it'll come out way jagged like this. Um, I'm pretty sure this is like a scrap fabric that was attached to my one on my already finished wig. So we're just going to keep doing that all the way around. Oof. You can tell I messed that one up a little bit. I took a little chunk out of the end. That's not the end of the world. If you like at the extremities, you take out too much because you're gonna cut off this corner anyway when you're like trying to whittle it down into a good 3D shape. Now that I think of it, this these thickness marks were kind of useless because I, I'm, I cut them off anyway. Uh, we'll, we'll worry about that later. On this side though, it works because it, it's lined up on the edge, but I'm stupid. It's fine. <laughs> Try not to do this too sloppy like me, because I like th this little edge right here it kind of like warps in, but it's done. It's here. We cut out the basic shape. Now this is going to be a little trickier cutting out the insides, but I would start at like the bigger part right here that you have to cut out. Oof. Let's... Yikes. <laughs> this is- this is gonna come out rough. If I'm- if I'm being honest. Um... Yikes. As you can tell, I've done a poor job on this end. Um... But, we'll persevere. I'm sure it'll come out fine. Me doing a tutorial and fucking everything up? Yeah. Um, watch the other pattern, watch the other side, and make sure you're doing that right, because, um, as you can tell, I did not stay consistent on both sides. You should flip this over and work at it from both ends, I think, and then meet in the middle. That might be the best option. This is getting a little tricky, 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut myself an opening so that I can like fit like my hand in here to actually work at it. So now it'll get easier and easier to open this up and actually like get to cut into it. Okay. It's not gonna look perfect, for sure. Um, but that's not exactly what matters, because you're gonna be covering this thing in felt anyway, which is gonna remove a lot of the worst bumps. If you're a perfectionist, this method is not for you. For the smaller parts, I think I remember using scissors in a very unprofessional look and manner. So I might have to do that again to get into the small corners. We will see. Okay, I think we're at the point where we need to start using scissors for things, um, because this does not look clean at all. There's a lot, there's a lot going on right now, but we will make it, we will persevere. Okay, so we were cutting this out with scissors, because essentially what we want to do is thin this out and at this point it's imp almost impossible to cut out with a box cutter so we're just using scissors to do this there we're at the, the final leg I told you it's a rough process but if you just do whatever you need to do you improvise you make it we will get there okay so with the power of scissors and determination we made it um, let's make that a little more even okay so now we got a rough a rough one of these now we've got to cut out the rest of the thickness and make sure things are looking smooth. Um, so, let's take our scissors. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm doing. Um, we are going to conquer this by the through the end, where it's easiest to cut. And we are going to progress our way down to the thicker end. This is getting a little in the way. If it's getting in a little way, feel free to just literally snip it off. Fix some of that. But we have ourselves a pigtail that's roughly the shape that we want already. But so you can tell it's very rectangular looking, and I don't know if that's perfect to go in a wig unless you want 
of Minecrafty and looking don't starve. So, this is the part where we sculpt. So, in Jessica Negri's video where she sculpts her pink foam, she's got foam that doesn't have give to it when she's cutting away at it, and it's a lot easier to use a Stanley knife. That is not the case anymore. We no longer need this. Yeah, we're gonna put that away. Instead, we are gonna be using our scissors to sculpt away at this. We're basically going to be sculpting away at the corners and just making sure this looks as round as possible. Um, and you basically just have to eye it. But we'll start snipping away at these corners to round it out. Already, it looks a little bit rounder. But we're going to need to do a lot more work on this if we want it to work. But start with the corners and then eventually you can start like rounding it out even more, really going at it, and we will see how that goes. Okay, definitely for the inside corners like right here, we're gonna want some scissors to really get at it and fit easier into your corners. seeing it kind of take shape. Um, uh, I haven't even started on this and I just started kind of going ham and trying to perfect this, which I shouldn't. I should get moving, but who is texting me? Um, okay, so let's get going. Okay, so at the very, very tip, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take this end and snip it all the way down to a point as best you can. If you want, you can snip off more on the edges here so that it comes more gradually to a tip, but that is why you're going to want your pigtail to end for sure. So far, not too bad. Not too shabby. And remember that you don't have to perfect this because it's going to get covered in felt anyway. Unless you want to paint it, because that is an alternative. Instead of covering in felt, you could spray paint it and so that the, co the color doesn't show through. I find felt to be a little nicer just because um, it <laughs> grabs the hair a little better. And I'm also not sure if this foam will absorb your glue or not. Um, I think that's something I might want to experiment with, but just not now. Like on scrap pieces of foam like this, and then just like try to glue some hairs on it and see. I'll let you know. Uh, or I might cut in at the end a couple of different experiments that I do. Ooh, that would be spicy, wouldn't it? Um, Cause I do have pink insulation foam. That I could test things out on, and I do have spray paint, black spray paint, and scrap foam to test things out on. So, maybe we can do that. Okay, I think this is relatively finished. I just keep seeing like little tiny edges that I want to snip off, but that's me being a perfectionist, like I said. I mean, it looks, it still looks pretty rough, but you know, it's pretty well rounded out. Also, um, I, my tendency is to try to like round it out and smooth things out, but um, realistically for like Don't Starve, you want it to be kind of like pointy and like scratchy, I guess. Like, I don't know how to describe the aesthetic. But, out of this pattern, we have a pretty good solid pigtail. And so now we won't 
move on to covering it in felt to prep it for gluing on wig hairs. Mm -hmm. 